Hello, subbies. First, let me apologize because I have been ghost for a while. So I wanted to bring you an update with my current treatment and give you some tips and hacks and information that may be helpful to those out there who are suffering from cancer, specifically colon cancer. I know there are lots of cancers out there that can be addressed, but I'm going to talk personally from my own personal experience with stage four colon cancer. Today is September 10th, 2018. And my update is a couple of months back, my, my numbers for my tumor marker just jumped up. It had been steadied around seven, five, seven. It's like it fluctuates with most people. All of a sudden, my numbers jumped up from the five and the seven to a 13.3. And that was an indicator that something was happening. Um, it's very important for those out there who are suffering from any kind of cancer, but specifically colon cancer, that you continue to get your blood work done regularly. Had I not been going in for my regular updates with blood work and them checking on me, I would not have known that my number jumped up to 13. Now at my very sickest, when I didn't know I was sick and I thought that I was suffering from a fibroid, which turned out to be stage four colon cancer, my number was in the 30s. That's how sick I was. So to have my numbers jump up to 13 point anything, was an indicator that something was active. So my oncologist, the wonderful oncologist that she is, Dr. Jessica Clement at the John Dempsey Yukon Hospital, their Ray and Carol Neag cancer group, they are amazing. They are my second family. She um, pushed that I have a PET scan so that they could see what was going on. Once I had the PET scan, the PET scan revealed that there was a, what PET scans, let me tell you the difference between a PET scan and a CAT scan. A CAT scan is something that is going to come out in black and white. And it's going to look sort of like, I guess, your typical ultrasound. And it's going to show you black and white results. And the doctor knows what they're looking at. But when they want to delve in more and look at something that might be happening that can't be seen on the CAT scan, they will order a PET scan. And a PET scan is different because it's in color. And anything that is of concern will light up like fireworks. So one of my tumors had a thickening around the edge of it that was lit up, and which probably was a good indicator that that's what the 13 point anything number um, was indicating that something was trying to turn into something horrible. So with that regards, they decided, hey, we want to blast this out. Now, mind you, I had already been on the Zalota for quite some months and I was taking that pill regularly twice a day for two weeks and then I'd have an off week. So they decided that to take me off the Zalota so that they can put me back on chemo for my port. Now, for those of you who don't have a port or who don't know what a port is or don't know what the beautiful thing about a port is, is it is placed in your chest while you're under anesthesia. You don't feel any of the pain. They open you up, they put it in, and they have a long hose that goes down over your clavicle. And the chemo goes into this little port. I have a smart port. And they put the, the uh, Huber needle inside of the port. Now, the Huber needle is different. It's not a normal needle like the one they put in your arm to get your blood from or a pick line. A Huber needle has a special type of opening that when it, when it goes into your skin, it doesn't take a chunk of meat out with it like a normal needle and you end up having this hole that has to heal. A Huber needle basically opens up your skin in a certain way so that it doesn't cavil, cave out any skin and it goes directly into this little small pot. I'm gonna show you, and I know you're wondering what this black uh, strap is. 
This is an Infusystem infusion pump. And they send you home with this after your infusion. Your infusion can last anywhere from five hours, maybe shorter, maybe longer, depending on how quickly the pharmacist at the hospital can mix up your chemo. And basically, once you're done with your infusion, they will take and flush your port of the stuff that they just put in you, and then they will connect this pump to you. Now, I'm going to pull this up through my shirt so that you can see how, you know, you can wear it. And it's like, you know, my fancy Gucci pocketbook. No, not. But it is very vital. I have to keep this on me for two days or 48 hours. So if I fail to get back to the hospital within that 48 hours, what will happen is this pump will start to beep. And as it gets lower and lower into empty, uh, it will beep. And I have had this happen to me, you know, not thinking about my time, maybe running a last minute errand with the energy that I still have left to the grocery store. And I've had this go off in the grocery store and I've had to tell people, hey, guess what? I'm not a bomb. I'm not going to detonate. It's just my chemo pump. I'm late getting it taken off. Please don't be alarmed. So usually everybody's cool with it and they smile and awkwardly smile and they leave me alone. But let me show you how it's attached to me. I'm going to do my best not to give you an X-rated um, shot. But this is what a port looks like. That inner little thing there is a new contraption that they made up so that it actually has some kind of anti-infection uh, soluble uh, medicine in that inner um, what do they call these? Let me look real quick. I'm sorry about the, the shift in the camera, guys. I'm doing my best. This is what uh, they call it. Let me see. I want to say it right. It's a te tegaderm. Tegaderm, this is your best friend when you have a pump. Basically, what I was showing you earlier. Let me just move my, my girl up. No x-ray. No, no x-rated. So this is the inner thing that they put on to secure that. And then the line for my pump goes down. Then she puts a bigger one over this. Why this is important is, you know what? Even if you're on chemo and you're on a pump, you still got to wash your butt. You still got to wash. You got to wash everything. You want to feel clean. You want to feel healthy. And you don't want to offend, you know, your husband or anybody around you. So this is important. This is very important. They will give you extra ones if you ask. Now, one of the hacks that I've learned over the, today is now, whew, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I've had 32 infusions since my illness. And what I've learned since, I don't know, two years ago is first thing, if you want to try to keep your port from getting too wet in the shower. Please, ladies, keep your bra on. Put a bra on. Put a raggedy bra on that you really don't like to wear, that don't give you any support. But why I'm saying that is put the bra on while you're showering. And this is the cool thing about this little thing here. This little thing here snaps off. So what I do is I hang it over my shower curtain, shower rod. And I put it at the very end. And of course, obviously, I'm going to shower completely nude minus I'm going to keep my bra on. The reason why I keep my bra on is when you put this on, your, your girls are already cradled up. So they're going to give you the support you need so that this port stays comfortable. Once you take your bra off, if you have a certain age, I'm 51, just turned 51 last month, August. My girls don't sit up the way they used to. They kind of, they don't sit on my lap. They're not lap warmers yet, but they, they drop. So when that drops, this whole thing is going to cause more pressure because your girl is dropped and she's going to pull at that little tegaderm and move at it. And when you have gravity against you along with water, you're going to have this peel off and you're going to worry about anything getting inside of that little special protective area. So the first hack I gave you was keep your bra on while you're showering. The second hack I gave you is hang this bag on your shower curtain 
rod so that you can wash underneath your arms and your neck and everything. And the excess water that comes from this area when you're washing your underarms will get on this girl. But because you have the brow on, it will soak up any excess moisture quickly because you're not going to do too crazy on this side. You want to get as much as you can and you're going to take your shower head if you have one that's removable and you just rinse that away and you'll feel super clean and fresh. The very most important thing I want to share with you that I've learned over these two years is this item. This is a lidocaine patch. I know that it's backwards. It's lidocaine and it's a, it's a prescription version of lidocaine that you can only get from your pharmacy. Yes, you can get over the counter lidocaine, but it's never going to be as much as 5%. So this is going to be your friend. Once you cut this open, the tag or the patch is about this, uh, this amount of, of size. What you want to do is you want to take it out and you want to cut it in half because you're gonna need half of that. Why well, use the whole thing? Use half of that. This is the second thing, this is the first thing, and actually this is the second most important thing. This, my friend, is the most important thing. This is what I call my lidocaine screen cream. And when I talk to my, doc, my um, chemo nurses about it, they crack up, they said, oh my God, I gotta keep that one. That's a good one. This is my screen cream. What I do is I take the container out. I have it up already, but I take it out. It's in a tube. And what I will do is I'm not going to show you again. I place a circle of lidocaine uh, cream right here because I know where my port is. You can feel it. It moves around. It's jiggly. You can see it. You put that lidocaine cream right there right dead spot on that port and then my friend once you put that cream on your port you're going to take that half that i told you to cut you're going to take the backing off and it's going to be like a floppy little piece of rubbery stuff but it's all lidocaine in a soluble base so that means that if this ever gets wet in the shower which I don't recommend, it will swell up and get very slippery, sort of like the way a, um, a stingray feels, if you've ever felt a stingray. I have. They feel like, you know, old jello, rubber donkey jello, as I grew up calling it. But anyway, that patch, you put that over the circle of lidocaine that you placed here. Place it over there, just like that. And it's going to keep that lidocaine in space, in place. It's not going to slide out. It's not going to slide out like it would if it was a Band-Aid. It's going to stay there. And along with the lidocaine that's in the patch and the lidocaine and prilocaine that's in this, this, you put 